Hi everyone, my name is Rajesh Bayana, and I'm going to be providing you with an overview of our study recently published in AJR that aimed to compare Pyras version 2 and 2.1 with respect to inner observer agreement and diagnostic performance in both PZ and TZ lesions. My co-authors are listed here from Massachusetts General Hospital, and I want to thank them as well as AJR for giving us this opportunity. So the intention of this video is not to go through our entire study in detail. The paper is available on the AJR website and I've included the link in the description below. But instead, I want to discuss some of the key findings from our study. So hopefully you walk away from this overview with some practical points that you can apply to your practice. So, as you know, Pyrads is designed to standardize prostate MRI including how images should be acquired, interpreted, and reported. And in our study, we are mainly focusing on the interpretation piece. Pyrez version 2, released in 2015, really simplified the interpretation and scoring of lesions by specifying the primary sequences in both PZ and TZ lesions, namely diffusion score in the PZ and T2-weighted score in the TZ, and introduced a simplified algorithmic approach to scoring. In 2019, Pyrez version 2.1 was released that kept this same basic framework and made further modifications. And these modifications were principally designed to improve the inner observer agreement or agreement in interpretation between radiologists and hopefully also improve diagnostic accuracy. And we'll go through all of these changes shortly, but since inner observer agreement and diagnostic accuracy had previously pretty consistently been lower in the TZ compared to the PZ, most of the changes were to descriptors in the TZ and the changes in the TZ have therefore received a lot of attention in the literature recently. But it's also important to note that there were some key changes in the PZ as well. So what exactly changed? And we can't cover every change to interpretation, but we'll focus on some of the most important, starting with the TZ or transition zone. As a reminder, the T2 weighted images are the primary sequence for scoring in the TZ, and the score is from 1 to 5. And on the left here, we have the scoring system in version 2. A score of 1 corresponded to a completely normal gland, which is very rare. And a score of 2 in version 2 was assigned when there were typical BPH changes, namely assigned to nodules that were either circumscribed T2 hypointense lesions in the TZ, or a heterogeneous nodule that was completely encapsulated. In version 2, lesions scored as a 2 could not be upgraded from there. On the right here we have the version 2.1 system. Since a normal gland without BPH changes is pretty rare, and typical BPH changes can confidently be called benign, it was proposed that typical BPH nodules that were completely encapsulated could be assigned a score of 1. Then, version 2.1 introduced a new set of terms that were scored as 2, and this included atypical nodules, i.e. ones that were mostly, but not completely encapsulated as illustrated here at the top, circumscribed unencapsulated nodules as illustrated here, as well as homogeneous mildly hypointense T2 signal between two BPH nodules. So this change is important. These are lesions that might have received a higher score in version 2 and potentially resulted in biopsy that were now being downgraded to a score of 2. In addition, and very importantly here at the bottom, those lesions scored as a 2 based on the T2-weighted score could also be upgraded to a score of 3 if they demonstrated marked diffusion restriction, so markedly hyperintense on high B-value DWI and markedly hypointense on ADC. The idea being that atypical nodules can occasionally contain cancer and DWI may increase the sensitivity in the TZ. In the PZ, the primary sequence for scoring is the DWI score, and the biggest changes were as follows. So first of all, in version 2, a score of 2 was described specifically as indistinct hypointense signal 
on ADC, as illustrated here. In version 2.1, a DWI score of 2 was described specifically as either linear or wedge-shaped restriction in the PZ, and this is designed to capture benign changes such as prostatitis. So what did we do in our study? Well, with the changes in mind that we just covered, we wanted to see how version 2.1 performed in comparison to version 2 in both TZ and PZ lesions. This would hopefully also give us some insight on how each of these changes affect interpretation. And how did we do it? Well, in brief, we had six radiologists look at 80 lesions on fully scrollable MRI studies, including 40 TZ and 40 PZ lesions. These included a broad array of cases, including PIRADS category 2 to 5 lesions in each zone, based on the initial reports. All six radiologists read all 80 of the cases once with the version 2 rules, and again with the version 2.1 rules a month later. And then we were able to directly compare how the systems performed, specifically the inter-observer agreement, and for those with pathology, a pilot performance comparison using area under the curve. Since our readers looked at all of the lesions with both of the systems, we also had the unique opportunity to look at clinically significant discrepancies between the systems i.e. cases where a radiologist called something negative in one version, defined as a category or a score of 1 or 2, and then called the same exact lesion positive in the other version, defined as a category of 3 to 5. So let's only go over the key results of our study and show you some real case examples with a lot of pictures so you can walk away from this video with something useful. First, Overall, inter-observer agreement was quite good in both systems. It was substantial in both version 2 and version 2.1. For PZ lesions specifically, agreement was actually higher in version 2.1 than version 2. And for TZ lesions, agreement was similar between systems overall. When it came to our pilot comparison of diagnostic performance, Overall, there was no significant difference in area under the curve between version 2.1 and version 2. In the PZ, there was no overall difference in performance amongst all six readers, but when we looked at the experienced readers only, aka those with over five years of experience reading Prostat MRI, version 2.1 actually performed better in the PZ. In the TZ, there was no significant difference in performance between the two systems. So these improvements in the PZ with respect to inner observer agreement and diagnostic performance with the experts occurred despite relatively minor changes to the algorithm. And remember, the biggest change in the PZ was the introduction of the SCORE2 term, or the linear slash wedge-shaped diffusion abnormality term. And this new term had a higher inner observer agreement than the version 2 term it replaced in distinct hypointense. On top of that, when we looked at the discrepancies between PIRADS version 2 and 2.1, again, cases where a lesion was called negative in one version or a category of 1 to 2 and positive in the other version, we found that our readers used the new term linear slash wedge-shaped in 19 of these discrepancies. And this resulted in 14 more true negative interpretations in version 2.1. These were 14 lesions that were called positive, or a score of 3 to 5 in version 2, and then were downgraded to a score of 2 based on the linear slash wedge-shaped term, and these were all patients that did not have clinically significant prostate cancer. And this is an example of this. So we have the high B-value diffusion weighted image here, ADC, T2 weighted image, and dynamic post-contrast image here. And four of our readers called this mild to moderately restricting in version 2 and upgraded it to a score of 4 based on its positive DCE, aka these readers called this lesion positive based on version 2. All four of these readers called this linear or wedge-shaped diffusion abnormality based on the DWI and ADC maps, resulting in a version 2.1 score of 2 aka negative, this was biopsied and came back as benign prostatic tissue. 
This is another case, and although the term linear slash wedge-shaped mainly introduced more true negative interpretations in version 2.1, like the previous case we showed, there were five cases where the term linear slash wedge-shaped resulted in false negative interpretations with version 2.1. So in this case here, again, we have DWI, ADC, T2 weighted images, as well as the dynamic post-contrast image here. And in Pyrad's version two, all six of our readers interpreted this as a category four lesion based on marked diffusion restriction. In version 2.1, one of our readers interpreted the diffusion signal as linear slash wedge shaped, giving it a score of two. This was biopsied and came back as Gleason 7 prostate adenocarcinoma. And when we looked at the five false negative interpretations in version 2.1 based on this descriptor, cancers that were missed as a result of use of this term, four of them involved crescenteric, markedly restricting lesions that were interpreted as linear slash wedge shaped. It's important to note that other studies in the literature have shown that clinically significant prostate cancer can often be wedge shaped, but when they are, they are often mostly focal, discrete, and have lower ADC values than benign wedge-shaped PZ lesions like prostatitis. Further, small subcapsular crescenteric lesions are often misinterpreted or missed. And this one, as you can see based on the T2 images, is a subcapsular lesion. So future Pyrez versions may specify that focal, markedly restricting lesions and those that are exclusively subcapsular are exceptions to the new DWI score 2 descriptor, and that only radially oriented linear slash wedge-shaped abnormalities be confidently assigned a score of 2. Moving along, the new TZ T2 weighted score 2 descriptors introduced in version 2.1 demonstrated only fair agreement. This resulted in much lower inner observer agreement in version 2.1 compared to version 2 for Pyrad's category 2 lesions only in the TZ. As mentioned earlier, the overall inner observer agreement in the TZ was similar between the two systems, and there was no difference in diagnostic performance. But when we looked at the individual discrepancies between the systems, use of these new terms resulted in two more true negatives, so cases downgraded to a score of 2 in version 2.1 that ended up not being cancer, but also four more false negatives. So cases that were downgraded to a score of two in version 2.1 that actually ended up being clinically significant cancer. And so let's go through some examples of these discrepancies. So in this patient, there is a T2 hypo-intense TZ lesion here that one of our readers called positive in version two. And then when interpreting with version 2.1, called it a mostly encapsulated nodule, giving an assessment category of two or negative. This was benign at biopsy, so this case illustrates the intention of the new version 2.1 terms, namely to not overcall BPH changes. However, these new T2 weighted terms need to be applied with caution. This is an example of a case that was called positive by all of our readers in version two, we're looking here at this homogeneous T2 hypo-intense lesion in the anterior TZ on the right. In version 2.1, however, two of our readers assign this as an assessment category of two, one calling it homogeneous, mildly hypo-intense signal between two nodules, and the other a homogeneous circumscribed nodule without encapsulation. This lesion unsurprisingly came back as clinically significant prostate cancer, but again, since two of our readers misinterpreted this lesion using one of those descriptors, it's important to remember that these terms should be applied with caution. And the last change that I'll comment on is the increased emphasis of DWI in the TZ, specifically referring to the ability to now upgrade a T2 weighted score 2 lesion in the TZ to a category of 3 based on marked diffusion restriction. In our cohort, four patients were upgraded based on this new rule, two of which ended up coming back as clinically significant prostate cancer, so two cancers that were not detected with version 2 that were detected 
in version 2.1. Other papers looking at this have demonstrated similar results, uh, ultimately supporting the use of diffusion signal in the TZ to improve sensitivity. This is an example of a case that all of our readers called negative in Pyrad's version 2. In Pyrad's version 2.1, one of our readers described this lesion as mostly encapsulated, a T2-weighted score of 2, and then upgraded the lesion based on the marked diffusion restriction to a score of 3. This was biopsied and came back as Gleason 7 prostate adenocarcinoma. In conclusion, overall there was substantial agreement in both systems and the two systems performed similarly. As described, there were some improvements to PZ interpretation, which is a notable finding given the emphasis in the literature on the changes to TZ interpretation in version 2.1. In the TZ, we found overall no significant difference in inner observer agreement or performance, but bigger studies are definitely required to better appreciate smaller differences between the systems. It's important to note that the specific modifications introduced in Pyrad's version 2.1 produced mixed results. We covered only the most significant in this video, but again, I encourage you to check out the entire article for a more in-depth discussion. I think overall these findings are encouraging and support adoption of version 2.1. At the same time, we suggest areas where additional modifications might lead to further improved inner observer agreement and diagnostic performance in PIRADS. So that's it. Uh, thank you again to my co-authors as well as AJR.